Welcome, everyone. This is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, reporting for Natural News. In the aftermath of a growing number of government-run raids on farmers and raw milk producers and food distribution centers, we do have a place to turn to to get informed. There's a wonderful documentary that is in the process of being released. It's being showcased in theaters in the months ahead, and we'll share the schedule with you. Uh, in this interview, and in this interview, we're featuring Kristen Canty, who is the creator of the film Farmageddon. You can find that at farmageddonmovie.com, and Kristen joins us today to talk about the film. Thank you, Kristen, for taking the time to speak with us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great, great to finally hook up with you again. Uh, we interviewed you a few months back, and uh, at that time, a lot of people weren't really aware of what was going on because they didn't they didn't see the guns in their faces, so to speak. They didn't, it, the, you know, the Ross and Foods raid hadn't happened and they weren't aware of the Amish raids. But now the issue is exploding. What are you seeing out there in terms of public awareness and the attention being given to this issue today? Yeah, well, um, when I first set out to make the movie, um, it was frustrating because it, this has been happening for a while and it was frustrating not to be able to get it into, into the public's attention. Um, there had been there have been many Amish farmers Amish farms that had been raided, and the Rawson raid actually had occurred. And um, so what I had been doing was just trying to tell people, trying to get the media to pay attention to it. And what I found was that people didn't believe me that this was happening. People, um, generally, people thought that if a farm was raided, it couldn't possibly have been for food. It had to have been that there were that these people had guns or these people had drugs because um, the country that we live in, you know, our government would never raid a farm for simply providing food or providing, you know, raw milk or meats to, to willing customers, willing adults who, who wanted to consume these foods. And, um, and so that's why I made the film, to set out and show people that, no, these people did not have drugs, they did not have guns, they were harmless people working very hard on their farms to grow and produce their food in, you know, um, as organically and naturally as possible, and they had willing customers that never became sick. Nobody ever complained. There was no injured. There were no injured parties, and the government shut them down very, um, you know, sometimes harshly um, right. with well, with armed raids. And now um, it's happening more and more. <laughs> so, part of this, I think, is is the idea that if they come in with all their SWAT gear and and the government guns then it, it makes the party look guilty immediately just by inference. You know, so they, they sort of stage a massive assault so that the other party looks guilty. But also I want to just note here that uh, being someone who lives on a farm in central Texas, it's not unusual at all for ranchers to have a firearm. I mean, it's considered one of the basic tools, you know, a rifle that ranchers might use to, uh, if they have chickens and there are a lot of coyotes, they, they actually shoot coyotes with it. I mean, that's not something I would do, but that's a very common practice. So having a rifle on a, on a ranch is not, you know, not illegal in most places. Right. But the, um, the Amish farmers did not. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so and, and that's, that's not what was on the warrant. Drugs and guns were, were not on the warrant. In fact, um, most of the warrants were for a third degree misdemeanor. Um, some of them were for operating a retail establishment without a license. The recent, um, the recent raid on the Rossum Club, um, well, actually, let me back up. The, the first raid on the Rossum Club, um, the warrant was one of those. It was operating a retail establishment without a license. And um, and then they ended up pressing no charges. They ended up just trying to um, nickel and dime them with building code violations um, because they there was really, they couldn't figure out any, there was nothing wrong with the food. Um, however, the the last raid that that occurred last week um, on the warrant was um, th this this raid was conducted by the FDA, and they um, they were accused of a felony for conspiracy to commit a crime, and yet the crime that they were accused of committing was actually a misdemeanor. Right. So they were accused of the felony crime of conspiracy when the crime was selling raw milk, which is a, a misdemeanor. So, you know, that doesn't really make a lot of sense. No, this is how the government just tax on. I mean, it's clear that this was a personal vendetta against Sharon Palmer and Rawson Foods by 
a few key people, uh, Treviso and uh, Powell. And we're actually going to release their names uh, and their emails, I think, so that people know who's behind this. But th this is a personal vendetta where they use government power. They abuse it in order to attack people that they just personally hated and try to try to come up. Like you said, felony, uh, felony conspiracy to commit a misdemeanor. It's ridiculous. Right. It doesn't make any sense. So. Yeah. Um, but now in your film, Farmageddon, you, uh, even though you cover the first Rawsome food raid, which happened roughly a year ago, you cover uh, a lot more than that. And can you, can you describe a little bit about the scope of what your film really talks about? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, the, the film covers seven extreme examples of, of government interference with um, farmers getting their products to consumers, such as, um, you know, such as these armed raids. There's seven raids in the film, ranging from um, government crackdown on a very successful um, sheep farm that was making cheese, and they were um, it was a very popular cheese-making farm. They were on Martha Stewart, and they had won awards in Gourmet Magazine for um, great, amazing cheeses. And, um, you know, again, it, nobody was ever hurt or injured, but the government shot, um, killed their sheep and, um, and made them take their barn apart and destroyed their business for um, what they, they said the sheep could be at risk for mad cow disease, even though the sheep never tested negative for mad cow disease and sheep have never been known to get mad cow disease. So you know, that's one example of one of the reads um, in the movie. Wait, Another, wait, wait hold ahead. on a sec. Just to clarify, you said the government yeah. killed their sheep. I remember you talking about this previously. Yeah, the government came and, and stole their sheep and then murdered them. The government, yeah, the government showed up at their house at um, 5 a.m. in the middle of a blizzard and stole their sheep and brought them out to Iowa and incinerated them, um, you know, for a disease that, as Linda Felice says, um, doesn't exist to this day. So um, Incredible. You know, it's just incredible. Yeah, it's very sad. Um, and there's another example in the film of a mom who had 40 Amish farmers around her that had no way to get their product to market, and um, she didn't want to she has. She lives in kind of a food desert where you can really only go to a major chain supermarket that doesn't have a lot of natural foods. So she decided with some neighbors to start a co-op where sometimes she went around to the different farms and got food and brought it back to her house. That was a central location. And other times the neighbors did that and the, the co-op grew bigger and bigger until the Ohio Department of Agriculture caught wind of it and came into her house with, I think, um, as many as 11 armed agents and kept their kids in a room for six hours, her, her and her daughter-in-law and their nine kids um, in a room for six hours while the government, while the agents tore their house apart, took their computers, their cell phones, their food for their own personal consumption and their food, um, their food that was meant for their buying club. Um, and so, um, you know, and so these the kids were terrorized, and and the yes. family was terrorized simply for having a private food buying club. Well, you know, I mean, if 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 this wasn't being done behind a government badge, these would be considered acts of terrorism or, you know, kidnapping, um, uh, armed robbery, burglary. I mean, these would be multiple felony crimes committed by by these government agents if you know if the, if they weren't just wearing a badge. Right. And in that situation, it was the same thing. Um, on the warrant for that particular raid, it said that she was operating a retail establishment without a license. And and so that was the same situation where for a third degree misdemeanor, they came in with 11 armed agents um, to a family, you know, that had harmed no, no one, um, you know, and kept them, kept them, like you said, kept them hostage for six hours. Now, the, the amazing thing about all this, and by the way, folks, again, catch this at farmageddonmovie.com, and the spelling on that is F-A-R-M-A-G-E-D-D-O-N, so two Ds in there, farmageddonmovie.com. I got that right, right? Yes, That's, one yeah. D, two Ds. Right, Hard to right. spell, yes. You, maybe, maybe you could register all the variations, four Ds and seven Gs. Yeah. And, and, you know. <laughs> but um, you can learn all this uh, there, there at, at the film, but... What strikes me is if you go out and talk to people on the street, just regular everyday people, they have no idea this is going on. 
No, I know, but um, I feel like um, I do feel that people are opening up their consciousness a little bit. I know that when I started when I started this out like two and a half years ago, and I would just tell my neighbors about it or people at dinner about it, or you know, if I was at a or, you know at a party about it, um, people were suspicious or um, you know very skeptical, did not believe it yeah, that this would ever right. happen. And I find that these days. Um, they do believe it. I do think that they've seen that, that um, the government food control ha- has gone out of control. And um, and I, I do feel that, I, I guess, I hope I'm not being too hopeful, but I do think that Americans are waking up to this and seeing that, um, you know, the government is subsidizing and, um, and condoning all the junk food um, that is in the supermarkets right now. And then that's okay, but you know, if you want to just buy your buy food from a farmer, that's not okay. And that doesn't make any sense. And Americans will wake up to that fact. You know, you're right. Thanks to the efforts of people like you, people are, are waking up. And, uh, you know, in the raw some foods raid situation, I know a lot of people who were previously, they, they were like, they love the idea of the FDA having more power and more funding, you know, bigger government agencies to keep us safe. They were all in favor of that, the Food Safety Modernization Act. And now after the raid, they're, they're talking to me. And these are people who are, who are, you know, very, very progressive, very, very, very much on the left. And they're calling me and saying, oh, my God, Mike, I was totally wrong. We have to limit the power of the FDA so that we can protect the freedom of our farmers. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I've been talking about, you know. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's so very funny. sad. I, I felt the same way. I mean, when we heard about the Food Safety Act, um, you know, we we thought that it was in order to protect us from the large peanut butter outbreaks and the large, um, you know, meat recalls from the fact, you know, from the factory farms and the feedlots, and um, and that they're not interested in going after that at all. The food that that really does have more of a chance of foodborne illnesses. They've they've really just been going after the small artisanal producers and the small farmers with extreme force. That's that's totally the case, and you know. Idealist, idealistically, uh, if if government was operated by people who had compassion for life, who really respected uh, living systems, you know, who wouldn't incinerate the sheep, uh, then I can see that that a large agency that operated with with compassion and respect for freedom would actually be a good thing. But the problem we have today is, of course, the FDA, as you mentioned, is just basically protecting all the bad, evil conglomerate corporate entities while attacking the small guy the, the small guys who are trying to sell honest food locally right um i feel that um even if a farmer and you know hopefully they won't i don't think that any anybody should ever become sick from any food raw milk any food but if a farmer did make a small farmer did make someone sick i would think that the government and and i think that the small farmers are actually very well regulated by their towns and by their states. I don't think we'd really need the federal government um, also on top of all of that regulating our small farms. But um, if a farmer did make someone sick, I would think that they would go in, um, you know, try to help the farmer, try to figure out what happened so that it doesn't happen again and help the farmer to get back in business and provide safe food just like they do with the, when the big companies make someone sick. They don't right. shut them down with no. armed raids. They instead <laughs> go, you know, go in and we, we try to figure out what was the problem and how can we prevent this from happening again. Oh, it's now incredible. The, the recent, um, you know, in the recent Turkey um, recall, ground turkey recall, the government's um, response to that was, well, it's your fault for not cooking it enough. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> right. um, but, you know, I, I, I think that we should just go in, try to figure out what the problem is, problem solve, and, and work together to uh, help everybody stay in business. Yeah, I mean, let, let's get down to the honesty of the situation. Two-thirds of the store-bought chicken, fresh chicken meat, is contaminated with salmonella every single day in every grocery store across America, right? right? And, you know, the FDA doesn't, not a word about that, not a right. word. Um, That's the, pretty much what my movie's about. It's just about that these large corporations are just getting off free, yeah. and um, and these small farmers are just working so hard to keep their food the best, you know, the, produced the best, and like I said, as naturally as possible. And they're the ones getting hit the hardest. That's the thing. Like Tyson Chicken 
which I consider to be one of the most evil corporations out there, just underneath Monsanto and, and DuPont probably. But Tyson Chicken, you know, big factory operation. Uh, who knows what kind of conditions these chickens are raised in. And again, they're delivered to the stores, contaminated with salmonella in many, many cases. It's been well documented. And, and you know, they, they would never think of raiding Tyson Chicken or raiding a factory cattle operation in Greeley, Col Colorado, even though that's probably turning out mad cow disease because of what they're feeding those cows, you know, ground up parts of other animals and things like that. So, yeah, pretty yeah, incredible. No, they've been spending too much time um, on people's backyard, ch backyard chickens and, <laughs> and uh, front yard farms, right? So, yep. you, so um, yep, well, I agree let me, with you. Let me clue you in on another conspiracy that's going on. Um, we, Natural News, we are conspiring with Mercola right now to promote your film and we want to ask you for a, a day that we can both both of us conspirators can uh, announce your film and sell it so I think Mercola wants to sell your DVDs and we want to sell your film through the naturalnews.tv premium channel so it's a download uh, sale but we want to we, we've agreed we've conspired behind uh, behind closed doors uh, to do this on the same day. Do you have any ideas of what like what day would be a good day for that? Oh, I have no idea. I need to talk to my distribution people about that. I, I'm pretty sure that they said that that was fine, and I just have to figure out when. Because um, I do have to wait until I'm done theatrically. Yes. And uh, in order to... Um, I'm trying to get it out into the theaters right now. Um in order to get, I'm trying to get the most press out there. It seems that if I play for, you know, some, actually sometimes one day, but um, I get radio interviews or, you know, it gets the word out there. But if I can play as many cities as I can play in a week for, then it gets mainstream press. And that seems to, I'm hoping that that really helps the issue. Because like I said before, I just think that if more Americans knew that this was happening, they would be outraged. And yes. I've had so many people come up to me also that don't have, um, don't just have told me to my face that they don't care about what they eat, they don't care about what they put into their body, um, they don't ever care to drink raw milk, but they find this, um, they really don't want the government spending their money raiding Amish farmers and spying on sheep farmers, and that, you know, and just the amount of money that's being spent um, outrages them. So I'm trying to. That's the other uh, thing, yeah. So I'm trying to, you know, get this out into the mainstream as much as possible, and um, and then as soon as as soon as I can, hopefully I'll be able to sell the DVD. I can't wait for that part, actually. Yeah, you know, people are <laughs> are just begging to be able to see this entire film, and and there, there's a lot of demand out there. So yeah, keep us posted on on uh, when we can do that. Um, and by the way, by, by even having this discussion, you are now conspiring with us. <laughs> so uh, be, be ready to be conspiracy. brought up on yeah, positive conspiracy <laughs> here. We're all conspiring to educate people, and that, that might be a crime in the near future. <laughs> so uh, be careful. Um, in any case, uh, where do you have a schedule of where people can find your film playing in cities? Yes, I'm, I'm working hard to get all the screenings on my website. But my website is farmageddonmovie.com, and my Facebook page is Farmageddon the Movie, and my Twitter is um, I'm not the best tw tweeter, but um, my Twitter is Kristen Canty at Kristen Canty, and I try to keep everything you know I try as best as possible to keep everything posted there. So I'm gonna um, have a, a bunch of a bunch of new dates in different cities in the next two days. All right. All right. Awesome. So, folks, check out those websites again, farmageddonmovie.com and uh, Facebook. Just, you just mentioned that is the Farmageddon movie, right? Farmageddon the movie. Oh, okay. Farmageddon yep. the movie. Got it. And if you do, send out some tweets. Put a hash mark in front of the keyword term Farmageddon. So, hash mark Farmageddon. We've been doing that. That, that little campaign has been going viral across the Twitterverse. Uh, and people are, are enjoying that. Everything on my website is downloadable and open to everyone. There's pictures there, um, and there's there's clips on Vimeo, and there's my trailer on the website, which I do believe says copyright, but um, but it's complete. It's open to everybody to use and promote. So 
That's fantastic. Yeah, it's cool. You know, you keep the copyright, but you give people permission to share it. And that's that's really awesome because that's what we need right here. We need this sense of openness and uh, sharing of information and and paying forward the education about this. That's the only way we're going to beat these tyrants at their game and restore the freedom for our farmers and our food. Yep. <laughs> Definitely sharing information is helpful. <laughs> Yeah, well, um, so, and remember, folks, if you share that information, you are joining our little conspiracy group, <laughs> and you might be brought up on conspiracy tra- Conspiracy to educate, that's a misdemeanor, I, I'm pretty sure. Yes, and we were <laughs> talking about this a little earlier. Um, I think that um, the, the uh, left wing, the right wing, the, you know, the Tea Party, I, I just think that this is an issue for everyone. I've been approached by Democrats who think that it's the Republicans' fault and Republicans that think it's the Democrats' fault. Both parties have been to blame for this. Um, you know, all, all administrations have been to blame for this, and it's going to take all of us to, to fight this, to fight this issue. So I'm hoping that, you know, food does not, um, we all need food, and we all need, a, need our farmers, and um, I think that that's something that we should all agree on. You know, that, that's a really good point. I'm glad you brought that up because the, the systems of control in our world, they love people to bicker about left versus right. That's, that's a little distraction fight that you're supposed to pay attention to while they steal everything from you. Yeah. You know, the, the, um, the real issue here is, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, that's okay. I just see a little bit of that happening on my Facebook page. And, um, and so, and just the real message I'm trying to get out there is that um, everybody needs to come together. So, and, and I, say this, I say the same thing, um, I've said it often to um, the vegans, the vegetarians, and the people that, um, you know, like their, like their raw milk and their grass-fed, grass-fed meats. I also say that um, I'm trying to get all of us together also on this issue because um, we, have, we have a big fight, and if we come together, we can, we can be stronger. I think that even the vegans and vegetarians, for the most part, think that if you eat animals, that they should have lived a happy life before you eat them. Yeah. And, um, and so if we can all just come to agreement on that, we can be a lot stronger and stop fighting, stop the infighting. You know, you're right. I mean, I, there's so much common ground here. I, I'd be open to giving a speech to a group full of vegan Tea Party members. I mean, we, <laughs> exactly. we, it, everybody. It, everybody agrees that we should have the freedom to choose our own food and that farmers shouldn't be molested by the government, you know, accosted uh, uh, raided at gunpoint by the government, and w- you're right about the idea that you know the FDA is out of control. But how did it get out of control? Well, it's because Congress stopped being uh, responsible and it delegated its powers to this agency and let the agency grow on its own like a cancer tumor. And this has happened un- under every administration, you know, from uh, Clinton and 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 Bush and Obama and the other Bush. I mean, it just nobody has reigned in these agencies and the head of the FDA is unelected, right? So no one right. put him in, put that person in, into office and no president has the willpower to stand up against the industry, the pharmaceutical industry and big food and big agriculture and Monsanto. So we have a situation here where you're absolutely right. This, this, this terrible monster, regulatory monster, has been created from both parties not doing their jobs. Right. Well, it's tough. I was in Congress last week um, speaking to some members who, um, you know, when they voted for the food safety bill, they, they really thought that the small farms were exempt. Um, you know, the bills are, are 1,200 pages, and, and the people that go and, and talk to them about how great these bills are, um, they sound very reasonable. And, you know, like we said, the bill was proposed as – um, you know, there's so many foodborne illnesses in the United States, and of course, like we said, they're they're all from the large factories, the large op- operations, and um, and so that's what they were voting. For. They were they were truly voting for that. They were voting for the FDA to to regulate that more. I don't think that they, ex- I don't think any of you know. I think that we all expect the FDA to act reasonably. And, and regulate that. We don't expect them to go into the small, you know. I mean, I know that's why they voted. And so we just really need to um, wake everybody up that the FDA is not acting reasonably. They are attacking our small farmers. Um, in my movie also, um, I know, there are seven extreme examples of, you know, government intervention, like I said, but there's also a bunch of examples of just 
smaller, um, you know, smaller regulations that really um, impede the small guy from getting their food to market. Like if you're an organic farmer, you need to fill out an amazing amount of paperwork um, in order, you know, just bog- mind-boggling amount of paperwork in order yeah. to sell your vegetables that are just grown in dirt the way that they're supposed to be grown. But if you're a chemical farmer, you're exempt from all that. You don't have any of it. Right. You just decide to spray chemicals on your on your garden. You don't have any paperwork to fill out. And so just little, and there's a, you know, a lot of other issues in the movie that come out um, that are interesting. And I've received phone calls from all over the world, from co-op owners, from small grocers, from restaurants and chefs, from butcher shops saying, you know, thank you so much for this movie because I'm trying so hard to support my neighbor. I'm trying so hard to support this guy down the street, this local farmer, and you have no idea how hard the government is making him, making yeah. it for him to get his product to me. It's just, it's so, it's so difficult. Well, Where if they just, you know, went with Cisco or, you know, one of the large distribution companies, they, they wouldn't have any problem. It, it's gotten to the point where the government is chasing these people underground, where you have to become a milk smuggler. And you have to, you know, exactly. li- li- literally, you have to smuggle milk across state lines because the FDA has a law out there that that transporting raw milk across state lines is a felony federal crime, and right. that that exists right now. It's right, and hopefully, um, Ron Paul has introduced, introduced legislation to um, allow the, the sale of raw milk over state lines. So that would help a lot if we could get more sponsors for that bill. But it'll never pass. It'll never, you know, Ron Paul no, don't has put say out. That. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be a pessimist. Uh, but Ron Paul has put out so much great legislation over the years. The the uh, another one was the food. No, what was it? The Health Freedom Protection Act that would allow people who who make herbal supplements and nutritional supplements to tell the truth on their product labels. Uh, he has sponsored that. I don't know how many years in a row, and it never gets out of committee because there's just so much pressure from from big pharma to suppress that that, you know, Congress is bought and, and paid for by the corporations. It just never gets out of committee. Well, hopefully they'll start waking up and, and um, supporting. So I've been talking to different Congress people that, that might sign on to the Ron Paul bill, and I'm, and I'm hoping that that happens. So well, certainly, try to remain hopeful. <laughs> I, I, I agree with you there. Your, and your film will be a positive force in waking people up and, and reminding them that hey, we got to stand up for our freedoms and our rights. Otherwise, they get taken away. And you know, you mentioned that uh, people who supported the food safety bill, they thought, you know, in their hearts, oh, we're doing something good. We're going to make the food supply safer. And that's the way it's always sold. But remember, you know, under Bush, the Patriot Act was also sold as well, we're going to protect Americans from terrorists. And now the Patriot Act is used to prosecute animal rights activists who are protesting outside these cruel laboratories that are doing inhumane things to animals so every law gets perverted and twisted and then used against innocent people rather than the intended targets right the patriot act is supposed to protect us from people that are trying to bomb us not not um people that are protesting well i think i think a this this all comes down to the interpretation of these laws I, i think under the patriot act in fact any farmers who get together and decide that they're going to take action to protect their rights, I think farmers could be called terrorists and arrested under the Patriot Act. Well, I hope not. I think that that would be, um, you know, the one thing, if they did that, I think that that would take it so far over the top that, um, you know, it would just cause a huge outcry. And I'm hoping that what's happened so far will will, will cause a huge outcry. So, because... Um, you know, we're really doing a number on our farmers, and it needs to stop to help all. You know, to help all of us. So. Well said, Kristen. Now we're we're just about out of time. And uh, by the way, I, I didn't want to make this interview uh, too negative, but I do want to let people know what's really going on. Now, if you want to have a positive impact out there, watch this film, Farmageddon. Check out the website, FarmageddonMovie.com. Watch the film in your city. Buy the film once we have it available through the conspiracy of natural news and Mercola.com, <laughs> uh, where we're going to be. Uh, conspiring to promote this educational documentary. Uh, that's how you can have a positive impact. Uh, spread the word. In fact, share this audio interview. You can share this right on SoundCloud. Share this with your friends. Let people listen. Uh, Kristen, is there anything else you want to add uh, as a closing comment? No, I think that we covered it all. As I always say, support your local farmer. And go, meet, go meet a farmer near you and, 
and support them and make sure that if they're getting into any trouble that you let your voice be heard. Well, thank you, Kristen, for taking the time and for putting up with my interruptions <laughs> here today. <laughs> really appreciate thank your you time. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. Have a great okay. day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, folks, there you go. The interview with Kristen Canty from Farmageddon Movie. Be sure to check out that that website. It's a great film. I've, I've seen the entire film, and it is shocking. Uh, you will see footage and scenes that will just absolutely blow your mind. Uh, unfortunately, the full film is not yet available. She's doing the circuit uh, of the film festivals, uh, attempting to get some press and some, bliss, some publicity for the film in advance of its release on DVD. But once it goes out on DVD, uh, once again, the conspiracy between Natural News and Mercola.com will be bringing you uh, this film and uh, helping to educate, spread the word, and also raise some money. I know, by the way, I didn't even ask Kristen about this uh, on, on the record here, but she spent a, a, an enormous amount of her own money to create this film, and it was a really a large financial loss, which is often the case with these these kinds of films so we hope to help her recoup some of that that money that she lost on this through sales of the DVD and sales of the film so watch naturalnews.com for that announcement in the months ahead perhaps I mean I'm hoping that will happen sometime this year in 2011 and again thank you for your interest in this topic thank you for sharing the word on this we do have to work together I don't care if you're on the far left or far right or independent or libertarian or you know, if you believe in God or if you're an atheist, it doesn't matter to me as long as you are willing to, to uh, take a step forward here and protect our food freedoms and protect the rights of farmers. I think that's something that we can all agree is crucial to the future of our civilization, our, our basic civil rights and human rights as human beings living on this planet. We need to stop the government raids on these Amish, on these farmers. Uh, we need to stop the government from uh, uh, stealing and incinerating our sheep. It's absolutely insane. These are criminal actions by a terrorist government that is out of control, that needs to be stopped, that needs to be, in fact, brought up on criminal charges itself. We need to see these people who masterminded these raids arrested in handcuffs, prosecuted behind bars, serving hard time for their crimes that they have committed against not just humans but animals as well. I mean, the serious, serious crimes that they have committed here, and they should be brought up under federal charges. Uh, which hasn't happened yet. So it's time to turn the tables on these people and make them, uh, hold them responsible for, for the crimes that they are committing in their attempt to squash food freedom. So once again, check out the film farmageddonmovie.com. Thank you for listening. This is Mike Adams, the Health Ranger, reporting for naturalnews.com. And you can also watch videos about all this on naturalnews.tv which is the YouTube of the natural health industry featuring thousands and thousands of videos serving 1.5 million video views a month out to the, uh, the, the entire world. And we do not delete the videos like YouTube does. <laughs> and we don't, we don't artificially modify your view numbers to make them look smaller than they really are, like YouTube has been caught doing over and over again. We give you an honest platform to get your videos out there, so check that out on Natural News. Dot TV. And of course, you can also find cartoons about all this. Yep, cartoons that you can share with your friends and laugh it up together right at counterthink.com. We have the Raw Some Raids cartoon, a couple of Raw Milk cartoons, uh, some stuff that you will enjoy there on counterthink.com. I'm the creator of those cartoons. Dan Berger is the illustrator. So thanks for listening and take care. Thanks for watching. This interview was brought to you by supplysource.com. Yes, that's our online retailer partnered up with Daniel Vitalis on that. Where you can find survival and preparedness gear that really works. It's rugged stuff that we test. I tested on the ranch in Texas. Daniel tested in the wilderness in Maine. And the things that pass our tests end up on the website. Things that break, don't. Because <laughs> we don't sell crap that breaks. Anyway, that helps support these interviews, which is a very, it's a, it's a costly operation to keep this going. So if you'd like to help support our video interviews with all these great guests and all these great companies, please check out SupplySource.com and thank you for your support. This is Mike Adams, The Health Ranger. Take care.